Hello. So I came across this book, Her Country, how the women of country music became the success they were never supposed to be by Marissa R. Moss. And I must say, I really enjoyed this book and learned some things that I did not know. Marissa R. Moss is a, a she is an award-winning journalist and it sounds like she focuses on Nashville and the country music scene. Now, I'm not, I mean, I'm a fan of country music, but I don't know, like, I'm not well-versed on country music. So when I was reading this book, okay, just to give you an idea of what the book is about, it basically tells the condensed version of a biography of three country music stars of today. Uh, Casey Musgroves, Maren Morris, and Mickey Guyton. So it tells the biographies of those three ladies while weaving in the history of country music and how it has treated the women of country music. So I didn't know, <laughs> well, first of all, I didn't know how long Casey, well, all three of the ladies, but Casey and Marin Morris in particular, how long they've been working on their craft and creating their music. So the author, she talks about this Grammy camp or something like that, where I think um, Maren Morris, she went to this and it's, it's kind of like before college or something, you know, <laughs> where I guess musicians, young musicians, they go there to kind of build their musicianship. And so, yeah, that's a thing, which I didn't know. <laughs> and, and she was talking about the different women who came up in country music. She talked about how Leanne Rhymes was kind of, kind of ousted, I would say, from country music. But I didn't realize that she, she was saying the author was talking about how certain women in country music, when they sort of go against the grain you know, and don't fall in line, then they kind of get ostracized, I guess, you know? So she spoke of Leanne Rhymes who, you know, ended up suing her parents and a record label and stuff like that. She had a lot of legal issues going on and she just wasn't, I guess, playing nice, you know, <laughs> she wasn't being a nice little girl. So yeah, that didn't go over well. And then she talked about, I forgot what she called it, getting dixie or something, which I don't know a single Dixie Chicks song, but I know of the Dixie Chicks, right? <laughs> well, you know what? I know Landslide, right? Is it Landslide? Yeah, Landslide. But I know that from, you know, what is their name? I can't think of their name right now, but I know that from the rock band who made the song first. So she was talking about the Dixie Chicks in here and how it's, it's now a, a verb. You don't want to get dixie <laughs> Or some way she put it. I, I don't know if I'm saying it wrong. I might be saying it wrong. But it's, it's a known thing that you don't want that to happen to you in your career. And, you know, those statements that the Dixie Chicks made about then President Bush and their 
opposition of his politics and stuff like that and how you for a long time it sounds like country music they they stayed away from politics they just that was a no no and then when the Dixie chicks chose to be outspoken about their discontent with the current president I mean, it was swift, the reaction. (laughs) It was like, it was immediate, okay? And the author, she talks about how with women, it's a little bit different. Like the men of country music can be outspoken and be disagreeable, but Women, you know, you got to walk a fine line and, you know, you got to be careful with what you say because they looking for a reason to stop playing your music. (laughs) And so, yeah, when the Dixie Chicks did that, it came to an abrupt end for them. But I don't know. Are they making a comeback? I can't quite tell, but... I mean, I don't really know their music, so I'm not sure how. I know it affected them, right? But I don't know how they're doing now. Like, I I don't know. (laughs) But, yeah, she talks about that. And then she talked about the 10% rule and how in country music, there's an unwritten rule where you don't play women back to back. And so... (laughs) And then you 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 basically only want to have about ten percent of them like making it or something. I don't know, but <laughs> okay. I I don't know if I no. I'm gonna say I didn't notice that on radio. I would say I used to listen to country music back in the two thousands. I mean now I don't really listen to music like when I'm driving I will usually listen to a podcast or something just because I don't want to hear people talking and stuff but like on radio you know I prefer a specific topic rather than all of that stuff that they do on the radio so I don't know what it sounds like on the radio these days but Marissa our mom, she was talking about how hard it is for new up and coming female artists to get their music played. And she talked about, is it the, I forgot what it's called, country radio seminar or something like that, where, you know, artists, they present their music to, I guess, radio broadcasters and whatnot. And, you know, they decide whether they want to take the, the, the music and I guess put it on their, their radio, whatever. And wow. It just seems like such an uphill battle for women. And I didn't realize it was that bad in country music. And then What I noticed in reading this book is that it seems like their kind of country music is rigid in its idea of what country music should sound like. So whenever you go against tradition, they basically just thwart you over to pop music or something, (laughs) which is what it sounds like happened with Taylor Swift and Casey, Casey Musgraves, am I? Yeah, Casey Musgraves, because it it sounds like now Casey is being considered a pop star, which, I mean, I don't know. It's either, if yeah, I would say if you go against tradition, they don't want you in country music anymore. And then also, you know, when you speak about certain things, when you go into politics and you express support for LGBTQ and just stuff like that, 
country music is like I'm done with her. <laughs> but then it also in in the book it also showed how the men can do it and it's okay. I mean, we all know I can't think of that country singer's name, but the red cup guy or the solo red cup guy. I mean, he's very vocal, right? And he seems to be doing okay. <laughs> He's very vocal. And then, you know, Casey, she's a strong female, but she's also at the top right now. So it's like, it's a little bit easier for you to be vocal about your politics and speak up for minorities who don't have that voice or the voice is not as powerful. It's it's more tolerated when you're at the top, you know? So Casey's in a position of advantage, but at the same time, because she's speaking on certain issues, it seems like they're, you know, country music is trying to, <laughs> you know, pass off to popular radio or something. I, I don't know what is up with country music. And then I never heard of Nikki Guyton. But apparently she's a kind of a new voice, it sounds like. But um, she made the song Black Like Me just in, in response to what all is going on in America today. And it was nice to see the sisterhood that formed with the women of country music. Not that it's a new thing. I mean, they've always been that way. But it talks about the high... I'm not sure if it's the highway women or the high women. <laughs> okay. High woman. Okay. The high women project. So it's the high women. <laughs> I wanted to put highway in it. Okay. So it's just the high women. High women. <laughs> okay. So anyway, they formed this group. It's kind of like a super group, right? And then I think they wanted to do a performance with Mickey Guyton and something happened. There was a miscommunication and Mickey was told that it was off or something. And then, you know, each of the ladies called her to say, you know, we never said anything like that. We, you know, we absolutely want to work with you. And they apologized for the miscommunication or whatever. But it did make... The author, she, she was asking, you know, or just bringing up the truth that black women are not allowed in country music. You know, that if you're black, they want you to be over in R&B and, you know, maybe you'll make it to popular music, but like when they see black, they see R&B. <laughs> And so Mickey Guyton was just talking about her her struggle with being accepted as a country artist and then making sure to distance herself from, you know, R&B altogether just so people are clear about who she is as an artist because it sounds like she is <laughs> a single black female out there. So, yeah, she's she's got it a little bit tougher than the other country artists, but just in general, it sounds like an all-around struggle for women in country music. But I really enjoyed this book and just to see that there is a Black female artist coming out, I mean, that I think is great. And I know my favorite singer, Monica, she was talking about I think she is currently working on a country album. And I remember R&B singer Fantasia was talking about it, but I haven't heard anything since. But I know Monica said she is working on a country music album. So I am excited about that and excited that some Black artists are coming into the genre and being welcomed in, not only by a country artists but also by the audience as well but yeah if you are interested in the history of country music I mean it talks about Shania Twain, Leanne Rimes, the Dixie Chicks, 
um, Reba, Dolly Parton, you know, all the ones we know and love. And you might learn some new names as well. <laughs> I'm trying to think, like, Oh, Miranda Lambert. I love Miranda Lambert. And I didn't know she is getting a um, Las Vegas residency. But anyway, I've been talking too long. So yeah, I would pick this book up if you like country music. It, it talks about country music and the history of country music, but a focus on the female artists. All right, and it's a rather, I would say it's a quick read, and I, I like her her voice, Marissa R. Moss. I like the way she tells the story, so I had a fun time with it, and that's it. I'm going to get out of here. If you like this video, please give it a like, and if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. I upload videos every week, usually music, book or film related. <laughs> but anyway, I am going to go. Those are my thoughts. And I will catch you in the next one. Bye.